Hey everyone. Let's chat Jay Slater. Um, the past two days, my YouTube feed has been filled with true crime podcasters, channels, true crime, Jay Slater's phone wiped, Jay Slater's messages deleted, Jay Slater's I don't know what. Then yesterday evening, it was Ayub and Rocky go live. Bruv, you missed it. So I actually watched that today. I watched eight minutes and I watched 10 minutes. And all day yesterday as well, I was seeing um, Ayub lies, caught in lies, you tells exposes two knives and almost everything about two knives and it's just regurgitated information and I try to stay away from it but sometimes I just I just can't <laughs> I can't I can't with people that just don't see <laughs> like no some people just could not see the bs of river rapids as i call him but good on him because he started his youtube channel what maybe three weeks ago he's already at 10k and he's already on his next mission <laughs> and i saw one of his comments at the bottom of that I just clicked on the video where it's time to fly to Sardinia or something like that. And someone's comment was like, good on you, not a lot of people will be doing this. I've been working on cases in YouTube channel for free for two years. I recently had um, a couple of like a super thanks and one prior, but I've been working on my channel for two years. And I've been a voice of truth and I've been channeling as well as true facts. Um, but, you know, when it's your time, it's your time. But it also shows that you need to be a bit of a bullshitter. <laughs> and add drama. Can I do that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um... I plan on doing a live testing. Someone might jump on, someone might not. Um, just because I don't know how it is in terms of technicalities of it. So it's kind of like understanding that. And then obviously, if anyone jumps on, then understanding where the comments are and stuff like that. But even in that testing, if anyone hops on from a subscriber, it's going to be subscribers only. And the tier two of memberships, because there's tier one coming out, I needed to launch that. And this tier two will have members only live readings as well. And you've got your Patreon, which I do on anyway. But then I also want to talk about the location. And my nose has started needing a tissue for some reason. And it's going to do my head in. Hang on a sec. <laughs> okay, so we've got our tissue. <clears throat> Location and... Um, The journey that would have said that Jay took that day, because I still want you to think whether this was an accident or there was something in the middle. I don't believe, this is probably going to go against a lot of people, I don't believe Ayub was part of um, the mid part that I believe occurred. I don't believe he unalived Jay, right? So we're going to walk through it hypothetically as if we are 
Jay, would you do it? And I said, as soon as you feel like the land is treacherous and getting worse, you turn back. It doesn't matter. You know, even when I was younger, I was kind of stubborn and my energy would go out to everything. But when you get older, you're like, do I just leave that twat to say what they want to say? <laughs> say to me because I don't care and just move on. Or do I answer back? And you learn when to give your energy. And for me, um, because I also sense energy around me, and even when I'm on my live premieres, I keep myself mute. But the other day, for example, I didn't hop on one at 12.30, I think. Hopped on the second. I think it was... Was it Alison? And then another one I did. And I was totally activated and I couldn't sleep till the early, early hours, like 4, 5 a.m. So, and then, you know, stop. but I always want to come on and say hi, but I think I'm going to have to not feel guilty where I need to say I can't stay on today or I need to stay on 10 minutes because the most important for me is the next day if I've got energy healing clients because I need to preserve my energy and I need to make sure that I'm uh, healing those clients. So um, just going back to the channel, if you enjoy the content, do like subscribe and going back to the comment that was on rapid down, down the rapids, uh, aka river rapids on this channel. It was saying nobody would do some of the things you've done or you're doing so you know just giving him a compliment and i was thinking of that and i was thinking this is a bit bs because i'm sure he's getting some money for it and then and then spirit was like you've been working two years on your channel and there's energy moving through me right now can you see my nose was dripping now i got a hiccup um and you have not been paid a penny. But I honestly be believe like his costs and stuff would have been given to him, you know. Um, and what I want to say is don't judge anyone. Don't judge anyone. I always say it from how they present themselves. Sometimes we um, always give to someone who's at the end of their tether where they're totally broken and you can see it, the vis it's visible. And we forget there's people going through the same pain that are probably trying to hold it together. And you don't know what worries they lay on at night. Why did I go down that tangent? Well, it's just come up. <laughs> so we had some <laughs> Ali G kind of lives happening. And let me tell you about the two knives. Do you want to know who said it? You true crime podcasters. It was Mark William Thomas. And I recall it totally. Because he said, I've spoken to some of the guys. And Jay allegedly had two knives on him as he left. Now, how that was worded, if he took two knives with him. Or if he had two like pocket knives. While he was in the club, it could have been in that bumper. Did he have like a bumper black pack? I don't know why I'm imagining that as opposed to a backpack. I don't know. Um, and that would not be weird for those places. Because even in London, like you can go to certain places and there'd be people that, you know, you can get pen knives. Stop. I don't know if I can say the word. So it wouldn't be, and especially if you're, if you're, you know, you've gone out to Tenerife, we're going to make a, a buck or two, and we still don't know, did he steal a watch? Was it a watch? Was it some other stuff? Um, but Mark Williams said he left and he was scared and he had to, obviously, I think Mark Williams got that from Ayub, but... All of you that are saying, we've never heard of this. Suddenly, Ayub's given us new information. It's never come out. It has come out. It's one of the things that Mark Williams said, Thomas said. I've watched limited stuff, so I remember. 
Then the other thing, everyone's shocked at how disrespectful they were and how they came across and, you know, I don't know, some whatever. I've not really looked at many comments, but I don't know what you're expecting because, you know, when I moved to London, it was very different from the north. But in some areas of London, that's how they do talk. Some people do talk, you know, sort of the street or with their bodies or whatever. You know, how are you doing, bruv? Oh, he snaked me. I didn't even know what that term meant when I got down there. He snaked me and all that sort of stuff. I don't know what you expected. I don't know what people expected. Did you expect for them to hold a prayer or a vigil? It's not going to happen with those kind of people. And yes, maybe they could have been a bit more empathetic. I do think they posed a little bit of respect, maybe not the full respect. The little bit of respect, I think they said something like, no, bro, we need to just leave it. The guy is no longer with us or something like that. When someone was asking a load of questions, it's very clear that a you is not a snitcher and he will protect who he knows. It's very clear he knows Lucy and he also is very careful on what he says around about Lucy. And with that, I also believe anyone that Lucy knew, like Jay, he probably wouldn't snitch on him. So it's unlikely that he, he would intentionally harm Jay. And I go back to my readings where I said someone can be absolute whatever, lowest of the lowest, a G-R-U-G mule. But it doesn't mean that they would actually X someone or be an Xer, M-U-R-D-E-R. -E Did some things go wrong? Yeah. Did Jay head to that Airbnb with an intention? Yes. Um... But if you focused on it, it shouldn't, what people are saying, and, you know, this is why I question everyone that's following some of the true crime podcasters. There's a difference between true crime and adding drama. Like, there's people that have just started and only filmed on Jay, and their, their channels have grown from, uh, like, 100 subscribers to 15K just within the month. And it's regurgitating stuff. In that, in that live that they did, all right, one thing I want to say is that they could play everyone that was on their live like a puppet on strings. If they wanted to play, where I say you, I meant the people, they can do and they can do more than mark williams thomas they can do more than all these true crime podcasters that are repeating regurgitating the information and the drama there's 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 okay to so you can have your channels that have the drama and you're enticed by it just listening to it you feel attached and you're always checking their channels well then also know to decipher between what would probably be true on who you um who you probably uh, trust and you can see probably let's say my video you'd be like yeah it makes sense she's she's probably she's bringing the facts and that's why some episodes I call psychic on facts because you know I I have that psychic channeling talent but I'm very much a realist and I like to speak facts because I like honesty and I'm a big person on respect as well but I'm shocked at the amount of people that we're expecting more from this. Um, if we just think about it, if you want to make a speech and you're feeling emotional, you're going to be like, I don't want to make it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Doesn't mean that you still don't feel emotional about something that occurred that was making you feel grieving. Um, these people are also probably, yeah, he, he had loads of this stuff, maybe a little paranoia. He won't listen to me that I wanted to drop him off. Um, we were all in sort of this kind of like, even from the nights before, we were all doing whatever we're doing and he decided to walk off and he lost his life.
Do they know more? Probably. So two key, key things on that live. One is, I think there's more to, which could tie in with the blanket that everyone's just decided. It's from Lucy's. So Lucy was there. Now, the only thing that could give me definition on that is that when someone asked about the phone charger, he said, I did give him the phone charger. Actually, his phone charger, don't take it word for word. You'll have to listen back. The phone charger was, felt like I was watching a bit of an Ali G, Ali G show. And I was just like, I wasn't laughing, but I was like, I can see loads of people behind the screen, like tense and really pissed off. And I could see that they could take this however they want. And I know that they they mentioned Down the Rapids and True Geordie. I don't know about True Geordie. But I agree with something Ayub said. He said, you're talking to us. Because I know a lot of people are saying they think they're famous. Some true crime podcasters, they think they're famous. If I was Jay's family, I'd be right onto them, shredding them. But they're not making a buck out of this live, right? Yes, they're going on to answer and they're probably feeling a little bit of, you know, entertainment relatability. But so are the people that are asking, you know, so are the people that are on there, either seeking questions or just enticed to see how these characters really are. Um, are they sus? Are they liars? Are they, is there something more to them? But he said, he said, I told him the charger was in his friend's room. He paused and he said, well, it was, it, he paused, he was like, it was in my friend's, it was in Rocky's and he pointed down to Rocky. Now, is that a slip? Because either there was two in the room and one of his mates was actually there or had stayed there prior to Rocky being there or was actually there. And Rocky wasn't in the room. Rocky seemed to have been sleeping quite, <laughs> quite a bit. They were laughing about Rocky sleeping in the car. I really felt like they didn't want to discuss Jay's ending in terms of not answering questions, but not to get into that. And a lot of people like this don't want to touch on emotional stuff. So they just stay on the skimmed level. Like we just need to be respectful and we're not making the box down the Rippers and G True Geordie are. And all these crime, crime, true crime podcasters that are regurgitating, making drama. For example, the phone being white message being deleted. Unless I've missed something, there's been no official news or statement from Mark Williams Thomas or media news, not social media, main media news or from the family that Jay's phone has been found with his belongings. And so how have we got to this sort of stage of um, his phone has been wiped and everything's deleted and everyone's believing it, you know, like you can throw anything out there right now and people will believe it. And the wildest story gets the most views, the most followers. Um, and that's where I say, like, it's interesting people have a slogan of true crime and investigators. And most of them slate psychics. And I think my channel is a bit different because I bring, like, the psychic side, but then I also try to do the psychic on facts, right? And I think that's important as well. Um, which, I don't know if there's a channel that does the same. And I think as people understand more and more and more that I don't just talk from my psychic gifts. I can have a logical, valid conversation put things straight and people might not agree with what i'm saying 
but I think I've got validity in what I'm mentioning. So that is a slip up there. That is something, there's more to that. Then he said, you guys are on to Lucy, but it was me and Lucy, and I don't know if he mentioned someone else, that was searching and shouting out for Jay at the night. So what did he mean by that? Because as we know, Jay left around, was it 7.30 or 8 a.m.? And he left, I had three questions to ask you all actually, and I've forgotten, but I've got my notes. So I might get down to them. And I'm looking at the time and I've already done like 18 minutes. Does he mean before sunrise? So in Masca, what time is the sunrise? I would have thought by 7 a.m. on June. It's already... It's already sun time. So did he mean the night after the, the night of the Monday? Because I remember it being said that they stayed until Tuesday, even though their checkout was until Monday. They stayed the actual um the actual extra night. So did they mean that evening? Well that's something to be okay. So the sunrise in Masca as of July is at 7.26 a.m. It might have been a bit later in June because as we're getting into summer, it become earlier. What would it be, 15 minutes? So did he mean the timeline is all off of what's being said here? And if so, and Lucy was at that Airbnb, hence the blanket. Now, it's not unusual, by the way, in some foreign countries to find a kind of standard kind of kind of blanket that is that a lot of people might buy from vendors or Airbnbs and etc. You might seem a, see a similar pattern. And I'm not saying so, but like with this phone charging it seems like there might have been another friend there okay which means that means the phones have not been investigated or they have and there's been clarity that um we don't know if someone else was there because the police have been closed have not done a press conference or statement and so they might have investigated and they know but there's no need to question further because there's also there was something going around this is where it's difficult to decipher between the allegedly true crime podcasters that are just bringing out regurgitated um information from a channel that they probably watched to get information or some from the mass media some from tiktok I think there's some channels that are just creating crazy TikTok stories and posting them on YouTube. Well, it's selling. Um, where was I going with this? Anyway, so you get what I mean. I don't know what everyone expected of more of them. Did you expect them to say, let's do a prayer for Jay? And I'm not being disrespectful, but I did not see anything that I didn't expect. And I didn't see something that blew my mind that was exceptionally disrespectful. Because if someone said that the family should be grilling them for that live and disrespectfulness. Well, how about the people that are actually making huge books off this story um, by just bringing out the drama of like his phone's been wiped, different angles of um, videoing, this has happened, different timelines happening. But I question the timeline of the actual day, the phone communication. I've always mentioned the phone is the key in this case. 
whether it's, you know, at, at different stages, I mentioned it was around the location, ping, the communication, etc. I even mentioned that, you know, if we look at back, it was once said that Jay went to the shop to buy cigarettes, yet Ayub says he offered him cigarettes. Did Ayub then say that he didn't want my cigarette and he went to get cigarettes? Or he was moving the car and he saw him go get cigarettes? I don't know what the final story is on that and we I don't think we know who is the true what is the truth around that I can't remember what Mark Williams Thomas said and so if he did pop to the shops he was hungry and thirsty why didn't he get a drink and some a bite to eat he probably decided I'm tired I want to head to my hotel maybe but then also, I remember Ayub saying that they, or Mark Williams Thomas said that Ayub said, while they were um, traveling back to Mascot after the NRG festival, and Ayub says he wasn't there because that's not his kind of music at the beginning or something. Um, they stopped at the shops to get some drinks. So... It seems like Jay did have a drink, okay? He had, like, I don't know if they got, like, I don't think it was cordial. It might have been water and a 7-Up or a, a Pepsi or something, you know. Whatever you might drink, just maybe add to your drinks when you get there or just in the car. So I ask you that question, like, does anyone... But it's those two things, not the knives. It's not it's not the knives. Then it's those two things where there's a bit more either timeline missing or there's a more to the story and someone was in that Airbnb like one of Jay's friends was there as well, and that's being kept hidden. And it might be related how the blanket ties into this. There's no denying that there's pills drugs in this case involved um but i agree with them in what they say that you know you're targeting us like but what about all these people that are making their money off the case and there's a lot of mis inter misrepresentation happening where people can do this of an incident of someone's life to gain. And so I think you're judging them, but you're not judging your favorite channels maybe as well, or questioning that, and you're just running with the show. Um, and unfortunately, people tend to run behind each other or flock behind each other. So the, we talked about the phone, we talked about the, the lives they did. Um, the GoFundMe from the family, I don't know what the hell you're doing if you're still donating. I mean, can you not donate to someone who's terminally ill, who cannot pay for their medical treatment that could save their life? Can you not donate to someone who has had their child abducted donate if jay there was no money for his repatriation or his funeral because there was some foul play in this but the foul play that you see i'm not sure that you um that were aligned on the foul play you think there is and i'm going to go into more reason why you should believe my reads and whether this would be an accident, I'm going to explain that even more. So Jay, you know, they left the NRG festival. We can say safely that he, he did not have probably two or three nights of a good sleep. Usually at these raves, it's probably four hours and then they're back up, etc., he definitely did not have any sleep within sort of probably 24 hours or a day. And then the lack of sleep of 
the weekend where Lucy made a point that she left early because, you know, it was a tiring weekend. To the element that it was a tiring eat weekend and they were raving and that's the sort of things that people do. I believe that element. Um, why she'd left early or she'd left Jay is another question. Um, so you've not slept well you decide all right i want to hit it i want to go with these guys whether it's because you'd lost your keys your mates had left or other reasons which we kind of know he wasn't there long and he decided to leave whether it's because he'd got what he needed he took something um, and again, there's something about possibly taking, stealing when at the club. Whether he decided, you know what, they've gone to bed, they want to go to bed. I've got what I needed or had my stash or whatever. I'd rather go home now. There's no point just hanging out here. And I'm not going to wait till one of them wakes up, like, to take me back. Or he started getting paranoid or he'd taken something um, like he was ready to steal something. Something was a bit offish. He, he left. So this is around 8 a.m. that he asked for the bus. It was coming at 10. He started walking in the wrong direction. And now we know that he would have had to hike to where his body was, where he'd fallen and his body was found two and a half hours. And they're saying this was likely to have occurred around mid 11 to midday. So 11 to midday. So let's take it 8 until 11.30. You are hiking and walking. Let's say you stopped for half an hour. Is that possible? Do you think that's possible? Do you think that, you know, the average person who's thirsty and hungry is just not going to be able to keep walking for that amount of time without turning back? And I go to the word civilization. That was a very strong word to be used in the GoFundMe. I believe that that place is not sufficient enough to fall under a place of no civilization. There's a main road there. There's main bus that goes down that road and there would have been people that walk. There's hikers there earlier in the morning as opposed to during the day. Probably not the route he ended up taking to that ravine area and the cliff. So I can't see exactly. I'm going to add photos because I was going to do this with the photos. I'm going to add photos. But I did take notes of what Signi had mentioned so how do I pronounce this Signai Zohando statement said at the moment Flex which is the dog clearly smashed the final destination and the area and the road to it were checked by the drone what this was is that when they wanted to show the location, the drone could show you the location. This is where main media is really sucking. And this is where your true crime podcasters that you really think are true crime podcasters should be able to give you the exact precise with the X and be able to investigate and those things out. But I presume they're not given the X directly from police as opposed to Jay's phone is deleted. These are the kind of things that we would rely on true crime podcasters to put out their investigators. So the drone could kind of like give you an idea of down, but the exact spot is not exactly known. And even it sounds like the dog from the Netherlands team, who's Signy, who I'm reading, um, because what happened, the police had said, we don't advise you go down there. It's too... Um, it's too dangerous and we don't want to show you exactly where it is. Um, and it seems like the Netherlands team kind of seconds that. 
but they also helped by showing the family where the kind of location would be um, they said don't place flowers or try to get down there it was too steep and even the dog couldn't go to the exact exact location down it was like far enough where the dog could smell down but exactly exactly there was so much rubble and cactus and stuff so that's that's in terms of the drone and the exact spot and on the third day of the search of the Netherlands uh, the third dog um, Signy Flex the same Flex managed to penetrate to the scene of the accident so it looks like they'd gone three days and the dog would get closer and eventually he kind of got closest as he could with obviously not falling or getting hurt um, the second day which was day before Signy's the team the Netherlands team dog Royce brought the search team to the helicopter site remember Jay's body was apparently helicoptered out with a person so it looks like even people might have needed to be put into the ravine itself to be checking it I presume with a lot of protective clothing and then helicoptered out whether they found the body or not um, and it's it's obviously it's a fair question for you to ask you know, the body was found the day before the Netherlands team were to search. But at the same time, I mentioned, I don't think all those ravines were checked because of how difficult and challenging it would be. And over time, the body would have been found. Um, it took a heavy hike of two and a half hours, which was covered through rocky terrain and lots of weeds, bushes and cacti. So this is the road that, the way that Jay took. And the steep descent down was spared for the team because the drone captured the end point, which was 20 meters away from them. So that helped them take that route to see how Jay went. It sounds like what's being said is Jay went upwards the wrong direction. And then he reared off. And as he reared off, it was a downward go probably across a little bit because didn't they say the phone ping is quite near to it and I'd like to know that in meters because near is not good enough when we saw that the phone was near a small palm tree it looked rugged but it didn't look like there was a massive cliff so that was the last pinging so we need to know if the phone was found i dare say that it's just too rugged to find a small phone but we still don't know it's kind of like you know jay's body and his clothes and bag you know it's run away with that jay's body and then his clothes and bags were just kind of dropped next to him that's what is kind of like because that sentence is not clarified enough you know if you're reporting on a body you will report I've, we've, we've got the body and the clothes and the bag um, and so sometimes the way that is stated if it's not clear enough can be misinterpreted and taken into its own context and still there's not a direct statement on that to know and I think they mean his he probably he might have took his t-shirt off um that he wasn't naked and as opposed to his clothes being next to him it might be his t-shirt that was next to him or his shorts if he just had his boxers on instead because it was too hot the search team immediately started to return their journey to be able to endure the worst heat as short as possible Remember when Paul Arnott was doing that 13th day search, he was pissed off at the police that they had not started by 10 a.m. because the heat got scorching hot at 10 a.m. Around 10 a.m. or it was really, really hot by then. So this is them doing that two and a half trek, hour trek. And what seems to have happened, they've done a timeline or someone's done a timeline from like 7.38, 8 when Jay left probably going upwards and then rearing to go this way and it's taken two and a half hours from that off point into where he went and fell 
that to me does not sound um, okay and it's also looking like it's very difficult just to maybe put some rest towards those that think you know someone took his body in a car and then drove and carried it two and a half hours to carry in that heat to put him down there would be very very difficult what would make sense is that he could not turn back because you know i know i mentioned that he he could see the sea right but seeing the sea and as you are going to the sea and you're seeing the mountains and cliffs get higher and there's a steep and by this time he's coming down he's getting more hot he's getting more thirsty um in the first read and i still get it at first he was kind of like no i just want to leave and stuff like that or whatever he was in kind of whatever he was happening but then he was a bit less panicked but then he got panicked and frustrated because it was setting in by that time he'd still be maybe in a little bit of panic but you know you see the sea you're not going to keep going further into challenging environment you're going to turn back unless you can't turn back Even if you're stubborn and you're like, no, I can see the sea, I'm near it, I'm so close to it. As it gets higher and higher and steeper and steeper and you're getting more and more tired, you're not that much of a idiot to keep going. It just got challenging and challenging. The drone footage and the final coordinates were shown to the family in the evening in what was an emotional moment, which we can believe. I'm going to add this map that I kind of got. The dog flex indicated a particular spot in the ravine, which she described as difficult and very dangerous. This is Signy, the lead of the Neverson's team. Esther said, Jay, Signy is not her name. Signy is the Netherlands team, what they call. You can look them up, Signy Foundation. That's how I knew that they were charitable or non-for-profit. That's another story of... <laughs> <laughs> being given but not given esther said jay would not have been able to get to the sea from there as he has as has been claimed because he would have run into huge cliffs that are now impossible to pass when he sees that even if he sees the sea sometimes you can smell the sea and you can feel the um you know when you feel the um it's not the water it's like you can you can feel yeah, it's kind of like the water, you know, you feel the dampness of the sea. If you see that, you're not going to keep going. And I think he would have felt the challenge as he was going on. Now, I want to point something out. Lucy apparently headed directly to try and find him. If he's in this Masca area, now, if he went through the Masca Gorge to get to the sea, he had a better chance but the way he went was a more challenging way and i think i tried to get the map um but these are the sort of stuff that you know your true crime and your proper things should be showing not the phone was deleted and just clickbait um and it's fine to follow them it's fine because we want entertainment because things have happened but sometimes we also lose track that we're talking about I've said there's exploitation in this from so many levels, even from loved ones. Think of a soul, though, you know, and um, that's what it comes down to. Just think of the soul. Um, and the reason I say stop, you know, think when you're still donating to the GoFundMe is you've probably got people that could do have a hand got people that are probably adding to certain things in life that maybe you could donate to them um or give them a tip or something or there's a charity if it was a different case and i mentioned all the way in my part four in a very delicate way but a very direct way if you wanted to understand it about the GoFundMe. I raised it as well more recently, okay? 
Um, and I still have not seen this massive splurge. I mean, even if they wanted to splurge this amount, um, it's not going to take this much, right? What are we... Okay, we'll get some of the mortgage paid off. They didn't offer a reward. I believe one of the contacts, and I think I mentioned it in with a certain day, was... It might have sounded like a ransom, okay, but one of the very first contacts probably asked for money and that was legitimate. Like they there was key information. And let me let me mention something right now as it stands, right? What's the date? What's the date? Is it twenty sixth? Twenty fifth, Thursday. I'm hoping to get this up as soon as possible. So tonight, it the family know a bit more than we do in this case. And um, it's an unfortunate case. It does come down to a lot of decisions that Jay made. But there is that mid-story in between. And I think I'm not totally disregarding the energies that are we have names of. But there's also their involvement, but we need to decipher how much or where their boundary of involvement ends. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask and share, number one, if a body comes from abroad into the UK, repatriated, there's this death certificate or whatever, in the UK, I presume that you really, if you're going to bury the body there, that there must be an inquest done, just like off the government or whatever, especially if it's a British citizen. I don't think if you're not a British citizen, you can come back anyway. Um, let me know about that, because I, I think there must be one done. So we must hear about something. The other thing is, is that, and I'm being brought by spirit back to, so now you can see even the Netherlands team mentioned that it was too hard to show the exact pinpoint location and that the family shouldn't really try to head down there, which the police said as well. Um, and, you know, the flowers was put a bit higher up. So we just want to remember that because I know a lot of people like the police have said they shouldn't go there. Obviously, they're hiding stuff, etc. Oh, and then we had the fingerprint experts, didn't we? That, you know, in four days, his fingerprints would have gone. Yes, but in deep ravine, the temperature is slightly cooler. There's also something about fingerprints where you can moisture them and sometimes get it. It's interesting with Caleb Harris, that shoulder bone. That's why I did that reading, if you've not seen it. It's actually true facts. It's not a reading or oh, it is a reading. I said it's not a reading at the beginning and then I ended up doing some cards to get final messages. Um, but, you know, some of my reads and a lot of them, if I remember, psychic on facts is facts and discussions. And so their DNA, the way they did it is got a DNA sample from the mother and the father and the bone that was left of Caleb. Now, if anything, that family, I feel for them, it's difficult to say this, more than Jay. Um, but I still think like Jay's circumstances is very deteriorated and traumatic. And I still get that. And I don't know if I should say this, but a few days ago, I felt a tap and I don't want to say where, it, where the tap was. But I was, I was a little bit sleeping. And I was like, Jay. And that really freaked me out. And I don't know why he came. But anyway. Um, oh, I've got a prediction of an actress as well. That spirit keeps telling me to share. So I need to write that maybe on the community. Um, a lot of deterioration. But it's interesting how uh, they chose to do the fingerprints. Remember, if something is trying to be hidden, which it could be. You're going to do everything that doesn't give an inclination something is hidden. So if fingerprints doesn't make sense or cannot be done for that amount of period of time in absolutely no possible way. They're going to do it in another way. They could have took DNA from the mum and dad and did it on a bone. 
um they'll do anything if they're trying to hide the underground crime and grugs to not allow people to speculate one of the easiest things could have been the right dna you know if they're trying to do that um and there could be a little bit of cover-up you know i've mentioned that i think uh, jay might have you know spoken to um, you know uh someone that's seen him or had hands in where he was held is um knows someone that is pretty high high up um in in i mentioned like the church being significant as someone who could probably run the church or governor or a mayor or something like that he basically all these energies get into his story um but the closest do know more than we know and Honestly, social media have, prior to all more and more of this drama and regurgitating stuff, because there's not much movement on it so far, um, were the ones that found Jay's background, Ayub's background, stuff like that, right? So mass media, because even they're creating stuff. Today I saw a thumbnail a couple of hours ago. I'm not sure if it's Daily Mail or Daily Royal or Daily Evening or Daily Evening, I think it was. It was like the mother receives the news that she really didn't want and heartbreaking. And I clicked on it, it's a minute and a half, and it was just basically that, you know, he was found and he's in a, it was a very deteriorating state. Um, and this is not new news, but it's mass media trying to sell. So one about when the body is repatriated to the UK. Two is if if you um had the opportunity to pay for i'm not sure about a private investigator because i think they know more information right but for a private coroner or inquest in case one doesn't get done would you do that i would do that i would certainly do that because i'd like to know the time frames not from a fingerprint expert that's not completed or graduated you know, these fingerprint or forensic experts don't just do a degree. They go on to specialize and they do a PhD. You know, there's a lot of, there is a lot of learning in that. And then there'll be the phone experts that are like, well, if you deleted everything off your phone, don't worry, I can get everything if you need it. I'm sure if they wanted someone to find all that, it's very easy. So don't sit and raise your flags and trumpets about yourself. That was something else. So a lot of people just being experts and then people running with it. Um, it's kind of like. Hmm. Misinterpretation gain out of an incident. And then you've got the family that are also, I don't know what on earth they're doing with this kind of stuff. So would you pay for a private in question coroner and there was a third question because some people are are going to ultimately say you know it was down to jay's decisions and it does everything we do are through decisions but then also a bit of stupidity but i really want you to think about a two and a half trek two and a half hour trek let's say from 8 a.m to 11 30 that's three and a half hours and a two and a half two and a half hour trek and he's in the area so if a car let's say he went up was it 20 minutes they said he went up if a car after he spoke to lucy had come the car couldn't access where he would have gone that two and a half hours there was no accessibility for a car but i also question i still questioned it from the beginning did they really go look for him? And now we're probably getting signs that there could have been a, one of his mates at the Airbnb. So I'm leaving you with that. But I also want you to think. Three and a half hours you've been out. It's scorching. I looked at temperatures. It's around 20, 22. 
that's not that hot i mean this temperature is where it's around 40 at this time of year but you're thirsty you've not slept you're not going to last that long i'm sorry even on a straight road you are going to pass out you're not going to last that long if you've not had something to keep you going and when you see a treacherous way you are going to turn back and come towards the road or back to the way you were going to see if you can find something a bit more less treacherous which was the way you was on originally you're not going to keep going to cliffs even if you can see the sea and it looks like he was really really close to the sea but there was no way for him to access it and he could see that from the cliffs these are street steep drops there's absolutely i just i don't think so i don't think so you would have needed to um you would have if you'd been from 8 a.m you would have passed out on the ground a lot earlier i'm not saying you would have passed out and your life ended you just wouldn't have been able to go you probably fell unconscious whatever it is if you and remember what i said now why would he then be placed in that area or placed back somewhere because the whole point was a reward and i think some people might think is this actually jay right now and we need to see what the family say but some people it's for a money reason as opposed to wanting to actually ex somebody and so although there's an interim story there of a bit of a foul play and there's other stuff that's been happening as well it can come down to some people saying it's an accident and ultimately in that case would the cause of death or the ma manner of death be an accident Because was he pushed? We see that's highly unlikely. If it's correct. If it's correct. The two and a half hours hike. Now if he had had something to keep him going. And he could not turn back after being in that area. Um, and he'd had like a few hours, even if not in the best condition or a few days. That's a bit of a difference. You can take him directly into kind of an area where it can be stopped. And then you need to move for two and a half hours. So I'm leaving you with those thoughts. I forgot my third question. Um, and let me know what you think. And hopefully I'll get this up this evening um and i'll see you all in the next one there is an alison chow has been found the girl but we're not out the woods on that so see if you want to catch that reading the first reading is there and catch up on the other readings i always mention that my readings are not necessarily always they are on the case but when we talk sometimes when i recover recover not to recover, recover a case, cover it again. My psychic on facts is to give you um, a little bit of something to think about where we hear stories, we hear everything, but then as we delve into it a little bit, it's kind of like putting it into perspective. Yeah, this family must be in pain. I didn't realize how these facts can be um, or how it can tie in with other cases that I might bring in. Anyway, everyone, take care and stay blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.